Okay. So my name is Tanner Poland. I decided to do a uh, map of sinkhole susceptibility in, sink in central and eastern counties of Kentucky. Uh, I live in Lexington, Kentucky and attended the University of Kentucky and was a geology major, which really got me interested in this. Um, I decided to do this because in my geology major, they never covered this. I guess they assumed that we kind of already knew about it, living in Kentucky for so long. Uh, so sinkholes are uh, basically like holes in the ground that form whenever water interacts with a soluble rock. Um, the water interacts with it and then starts to create these cavities, which over time keep growing and growing until the uh, overlying soil uh, eventually collapses or subsidizes. Uh, usually this is found in areas of soluble rocks such as limestone and dolostone. And karst topography is all over Lex, I mean, uh, Kentucky. It's a landscape underlain by limestone, which has already been eroded away. So there's, it's basically just a bunch of caves underground. We have the largest cave in the world, Mammoth Cave, and then various others all over. Uh, this is my study area. Uh, it contains the central and eastern counties of Kentucky. And uh, like I said in the, back, in the previous slide, more than 40, 50% of the surface rocks of Kentucky's landscape are limestone. Uh, I chose this study area because the uh, soil data that I found that I used for my uh, susceptibility map was bounded to these areas that tip way down there in the very far west, didn't have any data. Uh, my goal for this was to use four variables, uh, proximity to faults, the underlying geology, the overlying soil thickness, and that soil permeability to create a sinkhole susceptibility map. Uh, and I wanted to do this because sinkholes can cause a severe amount of damage to the infrastructure, and to be able to identify high areas of risk could really help relieve some of the uh, damage that's done. This is, a, uh, this is a map of known sinkholes that have been uh, mapped all across uh, Kentucky. Uh, as you can see, there's two main large uh, concentrations, one in the central area, which is actually where I live, and then a belt around the very far west area. And these actually correspond with uh, areas of limestone bedrock, like you'll see on the next slide. Uh, like I said in the previous slide, uh, on the right you can see that in the uh, brown right there, that uh, that corresponds to limestone, and you can definitely see where those two areas of high concentration would have gone, right there in the brown area in the far west, and then right there in the central area. And then on the left are the faults. And Faults are important because they are cracks in the bedrock and allow for water to seep down into the rocks themselves and to solve the interior, which leads to those cavities inside the rock, which will eventually collapse. And then on the right, uh, like I said, limestone and dolostone are the most soluble rocks in Kentucky, and those are where most of the sinkholes will be located as they erode away. And then here we have on the left, the soil permeability inside of the study area. And on the right is the soil thickness. Uh, these two are basically uh, used to see how much water will be getting to the bedrock. The soil permeability is how much water is able to pass uh, down into the rock. So the higher, higher the permeability, the uh, higher chance of water getting to the rock and dissolving it away. And then soil thickness is inverse of that. The thicker the soil, the less water that will get to the bedrock and thus the less uh, the solution that will take place. So my methods, my first method was to, I downloaded the feature classes and then converted those to rasters so that uh, each pixel had a value. And then I had to reclassify them. I chose a scale of one to five one being the uh, lowest favorability of sinkhole formation and five being the highest favorability. And then after I had reclassified all of the uh, rasters, I used uh, the map algebra over the raster calculator 
uh, each raster was laid on top of each other and added together to create a map of values four through 18. Uh, here you can see the uh, reclassification values for the uh, faults and geology, the ge geologic units. Uh, the fault values were reclassified based on distance. The farther away from the faults that you got, the less likely the sinkholes were going to form as less water was getting down into those cracks. And then on the right, you can see cl I classified the rock units into different classes with limestone and dolostone being at the top as they're the most soluble. And then as you go down to one, you get your less soluble rocks and you also have water. And then here you see the reclassification for soil thickness and soil permeability. On the left, the soil thickness reclassified values. Uh, one is the uh, most, th the thickest is at the one and then the uh, thinnest is at classified as five. And then for soil permeability, five is the highest infiltration rate permeability and then one is the lowest. And then here is my final sinkhole susceptibility map on the right with values four through 18. And then on the left is a histogram of the sinkholes and the values on the sinkhole susceptibility map that they are inside of. A large majority of the sinkholes were in the rating of nine, about 83% of those. And that is due to those being in the very bottom left, right at very bottom uh, west side down there. Those are areas of limestone and, but however, the permeability and thickness ratings were extremely low. So when you added them together, they were still very low overall values. And 97% of the sinkholes were found in areas of limestone and dolostone. And so this uh, kind of points towards the, ge the geological units having the most effect on sinkhole formation. The other, the sink, the uh, soil permeability and thickness, and then the faults, the number of sinkholes that were inside uh, ratings of three or higher in each of these were all less than 26% compared to the 97% that were inside limestone and dolostone. And then here you can see in the black are the sinkholes and then it's a imagery layer map. Uh, some areas of interest are uh, Lexington right there. That's where I live. Bowling Green, Hopkinsville and Elizabethtown. Those are all inside of areas of pretty high concentrations of sinkholes. And those are also all uh, inside the top 10 most populated towns in Kentucky. And so those being extremely high population, there's a lot of risk for damage to infrastructure and roads and residential areas that could, take, that could happen due to sinkholes.